Welcome to Ignite Intimacy, a podcast exploring intimacy, romantic relationships, sexuality, and everything that relates to these hot topics. We're going in. Are you ready? This is your host, Laura Aisha. Let's do this. Hello, Ignite Intimacy community. This is Miss Laura Aisha. And although you will be hearing this episode in the new year, it, we are just a couple of days away from the Christmas holiday. And we're in the last few days of Hanukkah. And we're heading towards the new year on the Western calendar and just, you know, giving thanks for this beautiful day. I. I'm amazed at how I'm connecting with different people all over the world for the Ignite Intimacy podcast. And we had posted an episode with Alison Lassard recently, and she connected me with this powerhouse woman that we have on the line today, Kelsey. What's going on, Kelsey? Hello. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So Kelsey is, you're in Ireland right now, right? I am. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. But you were born in New Zealand and grew up in Australia. Yeah. So, I mean, I, um, my family mostly are from New Zealand and they're Maori, so they're native to New Zealand. But then we lived in Australia, but I've been in Ireland for my work. My work took me to Ireland uh, about five years ago. Mm. And it's interesting, you know, that, we're, that I'm on this today because I guess what called me to Ireland originally was the fact that people, my clients in particular from here were struggling with opening up and with finding intimacy and even connecting to themselves, their bodies and the outside. And I thought this is work that I need to do in person. Mm. Uh, so I came here nearly five years ago and I'm, I'm still working on it. You know, I'm still working with them. Oh, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So we're going to dive into a couple of different topics here today, talking about more about relationships. We've had a lot of conversations recently about relationships and dating. And, and although we haven't touched so much on the relationship that we have with ourselves mm -hmm. and the intimacy we're developing with ourselves, and, and then also how we're sort of like ushering the community right? So like our yeah. inner circle or the, where we live or where we work, mm -hmm. you know, those types of communities to foster deeper intimacy and to create like a support system and an accountability system. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, this is our, our connection with the outside world, I suppose, is, is other than the one with ourselves, probably our most significant relationship. And I think people you know, we tend to think in relationships in terms of this person is my mother, this person is my boyfriend, this person is my colleague. You know, when we do have an ongoing, always growing organic relationship with the rest of the world, mm -hmm. you know, even if we don't always have a face to that, you know, so so that is a relationship that we need to, I think, always examine um, and always be growing with. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, it's mm -hmm. like there can be so much energy that's put out right yes. so like it's like I remember remember many years ago I had this vision and it was like especially with regards to men and yeah. I noticed that when I really liked someone and maybe they, things weren't going quite the way that I was hoping that they would go or it was just sort of like new and I didn't really have a flow of communication with this person yet or and I would have all this energy. And I hope this makes sense to people who are listening, but like energy from my body that was like going out into the world. Yes. Right. Yes. And, and, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then I had this realization of like, wait a second, what happens if I take that energy and funnel it back into my body through the top of my head? Mm -hmm. And it was like, all of a sudden the my internal state shifted. Yes, yes, absolutely. And I, I, I've had something similar as well, I think. I used to, I think when you have that powerful energy, I mean, as, as I'll speak for women, you know, when you're younger, you tend to, people bring to your attention that you have an impact on them energetically and you mm. don't know what this is or what you're doing and, and it can be a lot to take on. 
you know, because you have a lot of energy, you have a lot of power. I think people sense that. And you tend to, at a young age, get overloaded with a lot of other people's, you know, stuff, baggage to deal with. And I think it's kind of a necessary, almost a rite of passage to learn, that, okay, to firstly become aware that you have this power, you have all this energy that you're putting out there. And if you put it back into the, I guess, the container of your human self, what, you know, your powers to create from there and then your internal state, as you said, completely shift. It's life changing. Mm. Yeah. Well, and it's like, uh, there's something really powerful about filling up our own cups. I just think that generally human beings are not great at that. Yes, no, absolutely. And I think as well, you know, in terms of, we talk about finding love and, I think we look for it necessarily in one other person or in, a, in you know, a select group of people, you know, say our parents, our partner or partners, and, you know, maybe two or three close friends, you know, but the sense that love is, is not only givable to all things, but receivable from all things, as I think is really important as well, because like you said, we are so bad at filling up our own cup, but it's available in so many places you know, if we know how to draw it or we know how to tap it correctly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, you know, you can get the same amount. And I feel like I've probably in my own experience in younger years learned this the hard way, but you can draw a huge amount of love from, from artwork or from nature or mm. from witnessing interactions or that kind of thing. But we are kind of programmed to think you can only have it from these sources mm. and and I think that's where a lot of the the emotional drought comes in, you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's like, gosh, I love that as a meditation, just to think about, hmm, like, where where am I giving love and where can I receive love from? Yes. And yeah, like, completely. even like the chair that I'm sitting on, right? It's like, I'm, re it's like love, this, this chair is holding me up. Exactly, exactly. And I mean, just when I... I look around at, you know, my apartment, I look at all these things, but if I focus on one single thing, so, I mean, in front of me, there's a picture here when I was in a, a church in Milan and this church was pink. And I was like, oh my God, some person, you know, back in 1684 built a pink church. Like, <laughs> and I mean, that's not probably something that was, you know, funded at the time, I imagine yeah. by this, you know, this very strict <laughs> church, I'm like, you know, someone did that. And whoever that is, I'm like, thank you. Because 500, 400 years later, you know, I'm still, I'm still feeling that love, that inspiration that you put into building this, this bright pink church, you know, and I just get, I can feel that love just from looking at one photo or from one crystal that I got from, you know, one event that reminds me of this friend or from whatever, you know, it's like everything mm. that I touch or that's around me is a source of love, mm -hmm. you know, but if I was just looking for a source of love, say in a partner and there's no one here, I'd be like, well, you know, I'm, I'm loveless. It's terrible. Yeah. Or, but, or, or alone. Like that was, yeah, that was exactly. an illusion that I used to be in for many years, it was like, oh, I just felt so alone in the world. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think that's normal as well, because, you know, we are almost conditioned to look at things, to look at the things around us without a sense of the love or the sense of the creation that went into them, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Well, and, and I rem remember about 11 years ago, I went through uh, almost 12 years ago, just like this really deep, heartbreak and mm -hmm. and it was highly transformational and I actually am really grateful that I got through it and all of the things that I remembered about myself about life mm -hmm. and that I learned and received as a result you know it was really like this profound it was deeply painful and also really profound and it brought me to it brought me into the lives of these incredible healers, these di different women in the Rochester, New York area. Yeah. And I remember working with some of them and, you know, it's just, I had this thing about just like feeling so alone and mm -hmm. men, most of them just said at different times, it's an illusion. You're not alone. You actually have like, there is so much love around you. You have, angels and guides and you know the ancestors and like so like seen and unseen 
right? Yes, um, yes. <laughs> so it was like this illusion I was living in that like, I'm alone. And then when I was able to tap into that energy that of like, okay, I'm really not like, technically, I'm not alone, even yeah. though I might be in my apartment, physically by myself. It was like, I started to be able to tap into the love that was actually really all around me. Yeah. And I mean, some of the times that that love is from yourself, you know, something that I, I explore with clients a lot, you know, because if you're going to be dealing with relationships in a therapeutic practice, you always end up going back to childhood. Right. Mm -hmm. And what our parents did or didn't do or, you know, whatever experiences we had at that age. And what I take from my own experiences as a child, I had a spirit guide who was this woman who was very powerful she was kind of very strong but fiery you know she was political she was mm. active she was immensely immensely loving and compassionate and forgiving and practical and, and sort of all these things and then kind of as I grew up I realized that that was that was me you know I was my own child spirit guide if that makes sense and so I feel, and that's kind of a, a, an image I like to give to a lot of my clients is you are always loved because you are always surrounded by the you that you're going to grow into be, if that makes sense. Mm, mm -hmm. You know, the, the me now looks at my child self and feels so much love and compassion and, and empathy and support for that child. And I know that my eight year old self at the very least, is looking at me now going, you know, you're forgiven. You are fantastic. You can do this. Yeah. You know, yeah. take a break, have a rest. You're mm -hmm. okay. I mm. love you. And that in itself is, is such a powerful shift, you know, because the, we always have that person that we're growing into. Yeah. And I think that's really important for people to bear in mind. It's not, you're not a separate entity. You know, the, the you that you dream of being or of having or whatever isn't, isn't separate from yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And exactly. so you, you, it's like, it's like a bigger version of you. It's like you are always <laughs> surrounded by love because your loving future self is, is connected to you. You know, you're on that path. You can mm. see them, you can feel them. So at the very least, you know, the more love you generate now, well, the easier it is to grow from that child self into that, you know, the wise crone self basically. Mm and be and feel consciously protected and loved at all times. Yeah. 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 That's really powerful. So, ah, uh, it's all about the love. Really. It is I know. It's like, you know, I know. And it's so funny, you know, because I mean, I would be, if we're going to get astrological for a second, I would be super Capricorn. You know, I'm super practical. I would be, I wouldn't say cynical, but you know, I'm very hands-on, I'm very earthy, mm. I'm very grounded. And so, you know, when you go to meditation, they're like, love is love, everything is love, 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 love. And I'd be like, what? You know, like I want <laughs> to see, I want this and what I want this. And then, you know, as I would meditate or I would journey, I would do this work, I'd be like, no, it, it literally is tangibly, you know, everywhere around. Wow. Um, because I'm creating it. I'm creating what I'm creating now is what kept my – child self full of faith and full of hope and safety and and whatever and and I know that my older self is creating with love the future that I'm growing into now yeah you know so it is it is tangible because I'm doing it every day I mean even now talking to you I mean this is something that you know my previous self or your previous self or our previous selves created and here we are yeah you know, yeah. and, and this is just another experience. And, and as I go on later on and I'll cook a meal and this is something that my previous self worked for. It's an act of love to myself, mm. you know? So mm -hmm. if you can take the love from those places, it's, it's like a power up. It's like recharging yourself all the time. I think. Totally. Yeah, I, I agree. And it's like, you know, I've been touching into some, some really uncomfortable energies recently and, and it's just, you know, it's just like clearing another layer of the, of the lies. Debris. That I, yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, you know, it's like the lies that I picked up about life and myself yes. and who I am from other people and, you know, and just, yes. and it's not even that it's a lie. It's just like, it's an untruth. It's just like, a, yes. you know, and just clearing some of those layers. And so I'm really grateful for this conversation right now because mm -hmm. it is reminding me that, 
you know, as, as wild and wonderful as a, you know, being that I am here on this planet earth in this lifetime, you know, and as, as on just who I was in my earlier years and just so fiery and so powerful and just not really knowing how to harness that energy and, and still not knowing exactly how to harness the energy at times. And, um, yeah. you know, being in all this inquiry around, like, am I good enough? Have I, you know, like it's, the work that I've done, is it making me a better person? Is it making me more of who I'm here to be? And, you yes. know, <laughs> and ultimately it's like, it's, I'm love, you know? And exactly. And yeah. I think sometimes, you know, again, we get this, this weird idea that the more loving we, we grow into be, the more, you know, we'll just start to like radiate with this benevolent pink glow and we'll just like float, you know, like the goddess Kuan Yin on a, on a cloud or something. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the more in love that I grow, the more, the more in love with myself and the more loving and the more compassionate and, and, and all these things as you were saying that I grow, the more questions I get, the more things I uncover, the more things I have bravery to deal with, with myself, with my own Mm. life, with, you know, clients, um, the angrier I get, you know, at, at injustices or or the the sense of inquiry or the sense of needing to ask. And so I think there's this perception and I honestly think this is where people get derailed. You know, they start this process and they feel that love, they feel that power. And then, you know, they go through a phase where they'll be feeling angry or asking a lot of questions or questioning things or tearing things apart. And then they seek comfort Mm. in a in in another relationship of of someone that's also maybe halfway there yeah yeah because it's like no I want to feel like the, the the good lovey stuff which is like the cuddles and like the roses and the, the music and stuff you know not not the angry bit not the questioning bit not the exhaustion you know you sometimes you come to a belief about yourself and you just like you know that's been there hovering for 30 years and you're mm. like I'm so tired of this I'm so tired of this let me get rid of this mm. You know, and I think that's a bit of a, uh, a misnomer as well, because people think the more love that you have, the more power that you have, the less you'll question, or you know, the more or the less angry or the less upset about things you'll be. And it's like I don't think that's necessarily the case. I think the more loving you become, the more sometimes the more angry you'll be. You know, just that injustices serve to other people, or or you know what's going on externally. You know, and I think that's all a big part of it. But I think that's where people trip themselves up, you know, because they start on this process and then those layers of feelings come up where you're like, am I doing any good? Am I contributing anything? Am I serving? Am I doing the right thing? What's the point of all of this? Mm -hmm. Everything in the world's on fire, you know, and I'm, what am I doing? You know, and then we're actually not off track when that happens at all. Mm-hmm. You know, in fact, we're, we're more on track because it takes a huge amount of love and bravery and self-understanding, I think, to even get to that layer of questioning. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, and, and mm-hmm. you know, it's also like I kind of equate, okay, so just wanting, wanting, wanting to be in a relationship, thinking that yes. it's going to fix something that doesn't need fixing right yeah so there's like a there's like a belief somewhere that you know it's not okay to be alone you know it's yes it's like it's you're more worthwhile you have more value when you have a partner and, absolutely and so like okay so when I get that partner like you're thinking about all the cuddly loving and like you're having fun with that person but I know for me I rarely think about the other side of it yeah. <laughs> and, and and like, you know, like what happens when things get weird or awkward or somebody says or does something that's like, ooh, ouch, or yes. or like, oh, I didn't like that, you know? And Yeah, you completely. Know, <laughs> and this is so pertinent. I mean, we're coming up to Christmas. Mm-hmm. And so on, on one hand, you've got people who feel more comfortable, especially after such a chaotic year, wanting to really wanting to batten down the hatches and have a really traditional Christmas nuclear family, the whole thing, the Christmas card, the postcard, perfect Mm -hmm. external Christmas. And then you have these people that are alone on Christmas. And and even for people that are happy being alone or, or, or understand that they're never alone, you know, Christmas can be challenging because you're constantly being, 
beaten over the head, I suppose, with these images of no, but you have to be in a relationship. Yeah, you know, or surrounded you, you, by family or exactly, yeah. and and a nuclear family that all look the same and they all have matching sweaters and the whole thing. And it's like if you don't have this. If you, if your life and your experience doesn't fit into this very small category, well, you know, you're a massive failure for three weeks of the year, it mm. feels like. So even for people that are, you know, so conscious and so aware, this time of year collectively can be such a unstable time because, you know, you can be like the rest of the year, I'm happy with X, Y, Z, but all of a sudden I'm being shown by the media and by other people and social media and whatever else that, you know, I should be fitting into this idea of what love looks like externally Mm -hmm. and that can be really challenging for a lot of people I think as well oh yeah absolutely I mean it's that is one of the big challenges is that we're portrayed we're we we not that we're portrayed but we experience these stories of love and family and connection and you know through the media through yeah television shows and the movies and social media and many times people are showing only what they want other people to see. They're not showing the struggles and the heartache and the the difficult times and, you know, the challenges. So I notice more people are starting to share more of that, but yeah, you know, yeah. And, and like, I even noticed that I'll see people on the street and this has just become more and more clear for me, but I'll see people when I'm out and about in the world. And I think, oh, look at them. They look so happy. They look so in love. And I create this whole beautiful picture perfect story about these people that I saw for five seconds walking down the street or sitting in a restaurant or on the train, (laughs) you know, and I think, oh, they're so in love. Like, I want that, you know, and it's like, almost like this automatic story that goes off in my head. And, and I did it the other night in New York. And, and then I, I got together with, with this person that was with this couple. And he said like, oh yeah, that you know, they, they recently got together. And I'm thinking like, oh, in my mind, I'm thinking like, they've been together for a while. They're like, yes. you know, solid, <laughs> you know, and then I'm, I'm remembering again, like, okay, there you go making up stories, like your fantasy world, you know? Exactly. But you know what? A lot of this is the way the way that our brains function as humans is to create patterns and to fill in gaps of, of what we know should be there. And I mean, for example, just a really silly example of like, you know, when we look forward, we, we don't see our nose, but we know it's there. And that's the example that scientists (laughs) use to explain that like, this is what our brain does. It fills in the gaps of what we can see and perceive, you know? So like we see, two people, a man and a woman next to each other at Christmas time. And you're like, oh my God, they're so in love. It's natural because you project all these mm-hmm. things. And especially with social media, whose job a lot of the time is, is to project these things. And you know what the funniest thing is, is I used to have my phone number on my website and, and every Christmas day, you know, Christmas morning, I'd check in and all my clients, you know, a lot of them tend to follow me on Facebook and that kind of thing. And they'd be like, wonderful Christmas with the family, you know, the fire and the dog and the, the kids and the whole thing. I would get calls all day Christmas Day saying, look, I'm in the closet. I can't cope. I'm I'm literally hiding in the broom closet because I can't deal with these people anymore. <laughs> Every single Christmas Day I had to take my phone number off my website because I was like, you know, if, <laughs> <laughs> the, the energy that you've expended here on on battening down the hatches and, and presenting this picture-perfect view, you know, wouldn't that have been better serving you and your family by – having an authentic time of year like you would any other time of year and they're like yeah but it's Christmas you know so you have Mm. to so here they are in the broom closet with me on the phone and I'd be like well (laughs) you know (laughs) you know like meanwhile someone's looking at your photos on Facebook or whatever of your perfect family totally and and they're feeling so alone and lonely yeah yeah you know so it's just this big cycle and I think we serve others we serve ourselves sometimes by I think pulling ourselves out of that and going, well, you know what, it's it, it doesn't work like that way for my family. Mm-hmm. And then, you know what, every single other person goes, me either, you know, exactly. me either, or exactly. I feel alone, or I feel like this, or I feel like, you know, whatever else. And I think it just takes the one person to ask the question, which is why sometimes the most loving thing we can do is not be loving and play the game. 
it's to be the one that asks the questions or Mm -hmm. to be the one that that pulls aside the layers and said, well, what's going on at the core of this here, Mm. you know, and how are we contributing to it? Mm. Yeah. You know, because I think a lot of people go, well, I feel that I have to have a perfect relationship and at Christmas time, but I, I, if they saw it as I am contributing to making someone else feel lonely and unhappy through my false projection, they wouldn't do it. Yeah. You know, they would, they would be like, I actually have a social responsibility to be honest Mm. about whatever my family or relationship or Christmas or whatever may look like. And that will empower someone else who will empower someone else who will empower someone else, you know, and that would be the most loving thing. Mm. Mm. You know, I just love that. I just am so grateful that this is coming up because I have definitely had my challenges with social media and I'm grateful that over the last few years I've created space between me and social media. So yeah. I, I don't live my life through social media. Uh, yeah. There's actually, there's like most of the things that I experience in my life, I don't share on social media. And a lot of it is like amazing. I mean, if I shared, if I shared all the adventures and things that I've been doing and <laughs> experiencing, like pe- people would be like, wow, you're like living like a really amazing life. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, exactly. Like, and, and I am, and there's a lot of challenges, you know, like, Oh, completely. You know, I, mean, so, I have so many people that say to me like, Oh, I see your Facebook. I see your Instagram. It must be so lovely to work for yourself <laughs> and to empower people and have all these holidays. And I'm like, I uh, work <laughs> seven days. Like you don't, I don't have, you know, the camera out when I'm like running from one job to another or it's yeah. three in the morning and I'm yeah. having my dinner or, you know, like I'm, I'm going bald from the stress or it's Christmas day and you're calling me from the broom closet. Like, <laughs> Yeah, exactly. You're like, yeah, you don't see that <laughs> I know and I just think well so I try and limit as you said like my social media because at the same time I you know you don't want to have all that on social media but at the same time you don't want to be dishonest yeah. you know I, I also don't want to sell anyone a false view that I am sitting around twiddling my thumbs permanently on holiday exactly you know you know I, I had a holiday holiday earlier this year for two weeks it was actually the first time since I started my business nearly six years ago that I had ever taken a holiday that I didn't work Mm. and I didn't know what to do with myself, you know? And, (laughs) and, and so I've, I've traveled in that six years I'd been to, you know, maybe 15 or 16 countries, but I have worked in every single one, you know, I've worked around the clock, you know, and I, I think I always say to people sometimes, you know, you, you do have a, you do have an obligation, I think with social media, to not to overshare necessarily, but to empower other people to go, okay, well, my situation may not be as picture perfect as, as, as other people's or, you know, and to create the space for people to feel that as well and to be vulnerable and stuff as well and connect properly on social media instead Mm. of just everyone circulating in this pit of, of envy and perfection and, you know, Photoshop. Yeah. Yeah. Or or like the, I'm like, I'm not good enough or I, exactly. Well, okay. So this is, this is a rich conversation and I just, I'd love for you to share with the Ignite Intimacy community more about you and your, your origin story and just like what led you to the work that you do now. Wow. Okay. So I had a really interesting to say the least upbringing. I, as I mentioned before, um, my background is Maori, who are the indigenous people of, of New Zealand. You know, so on one hand, we lived in Australia, which is very, it's very Western. It's a very new country. As I was growing up, it probably wasn't particularly diverse. It could be quite conservative. You know, so on one hand, we have this really rich, powerful warrior culture, which is what I came from. and you know, very socially aware parents who all worked in community services. You know, my dad was a fireman, my mom, uh, she did foster care. She took in, you know, other people's children. And so there was always this, this theme of service, but at the same time, 
our spirituality was such an important part to us and, and both on a native level, you know, so traditional Maori or Polynesian beliefs and myths and legends. And then, you know, from, from my grandmothers and my aunties, you know, from childhood at the time I was learning to read, I learned to read from the astrology section in newspapers, you know, when I was sort of <laughs> That's awesome. four or five years old reading these things. And what's amazing actually is that the astrologer I used to read every Sunday is now one of my clients. So it's like, wow, you know, the, the, she, this is like, this is my celebrity crush. You know, it's like, oh my God, this is the world is tilted on its axis. But, uh, <laughs> and probably makes her feel ancient. But anyway, it's another story. But yeah, and it was a very diverse spiritual spiritual upbringing, you know, because there was elements of we used the tarot, we used feng shui, we used uh, Western astrology, we used Chinese astrology, and we believed in meditation, we used natural healing, we believed in plant medicine. We traveled so much, which was, I think, you know, in hindsight, really fortunate because we got to see and experience a lot of cultures. And it wasn't so much in the sense of being new age, or it wasn't the introduction that a lot of other people have, which is, you know, as an adult into spirituality, when they start searching, it was just, it was like, there's no need to search. It's it's here. It's, it's mm. everywhere. Mm-hmm. And, and this really important saying that I, that I remembered actually from a shaman in Egypt of all places, um, told me, you know, trust in your God, whoever that may be, but always tie up your own camel. And that was the belief that we lived by, which was, you know, pay your taxes and and go to work and do your hustle and confront injustices and things in the world. But, you know, search within yourself and you need to pray, you need to meditate and you need to, to cooperate with the things around you, including, you know, time and and your spirit guides and consciousness and past lives and you know, so it wasn't just in the sense of maybe navel gazing or in the sense of how to manifest things that we want. It was, you know, spirituality, I think, as well for, for a lot of native people of a lot of cultures is about survival. You know, it's very practical spirituality. It's very, you know, not just manifesting to to retire at age 40, mm. but it's about, you know, how do I find the money to give my kids an education? Mm-hmm. Or how do I find the strength to go and deal with a system every day that's that's set up against me? You know, when I use my dad as an example, you know, he worked his way through the, the ranks of the fire brigade and he, and he's now, you know, he's now a commander and he's he's a Maori man. He's a man of color in a predominantly white institution. And the spiritual strength that it takes to go and, you know, put out literal fires every day as well as political fires and and social injustices that come from being a person of colour, you know, that was his spirituality. Yeah. That was his growth. Yeah, it, it took that, you know. And so for me that was the approach to towards spirituality or towards growth or consciousness that I try and bring to my clients now is that, you know, it's not a luxury to look after yourself. It's not a luxury to to grow or be conscious. It's a necessity. That's you know, right. and, and if you're gonna survive in a in the modern world, you need every tool that you have. You know, and we do have these tools absolutely everywhere. So, you know, why not utilize them on a really practical day to day level? You know, why not utilize them? Mm-hmm. And that was kind of how I was always taught about, you know, about whether it was, say, feng shui. And as, you know, I said to you earlier, when I was younger, I wouldn't have a tantrum. I would look at the feng shui of, you know, my bedroom and move things around or move toys around and try and, you know, arrange the flow of of energy better or something. Mm. Mm -hmm. Because I was always conscious that you can influence your surroundings and your state of mind. And if you do the work then things will flow to you easier. It was about simplifying, you know, it wasn't about necessarily elevating myself away from problems. It was like, well, how do I get into the midst of this and come up with practical solutions? So, Mm. I mean, that's what I try and do with my clients now is, you know, not complicate their lives, but simplify them and, and give them every tool under the sun to kind of examine themselves and their relationships and, and exist in them, you know, more peacefully, I suppose. That's amazing. And how do you use the different modalities that you learned as a youth in the work that you do today? Well, 
I mean, it's it's so interesting for me because, like, like I said, it was it was always just natural. It was always there. You know, I do my cards, you know, my tarot cards, but I do my homework as well. I didn't do that much homework, but you know, I would. I would kind of balance those things. And that's what I try and bring to my clients. And, you know, as I said, I work with a lot of mixed race people. I work with a lot of men. I work with a lot of younger women in particular. And we look at, from a clinical point of view, from a counseling point of view, we look at, you know, patterns, whether it's behavioral patterns or relationship patterns or, or even questions that they have. And we can utilize, you know, a whole lot of tools. So sometimes, you know, the tarot is a perfect example, you know, for looking at patterns in relationships Mm. and archetypes within relationships and and who people represent to us. So working with tarot can be really good for people that may not have a fantastic family structure per se, because you can work out what it is that you're missing, what elements of of the family that you're missing and how can you seek those in other parts of your life or, mm-hmm. or within yourself, you know, and, and I did have this on one hand, really magical, powerfully inspiring spiritual upbringing, but we also had the realities of, of the time, which, which was violence. It was divorce. It was, you know, alcoholism. It was witnessing abuse or experiencing abuse. And that was normality for us as well. So, you know, a lot of my clients who come to me have been through those things or experiencing those things. Mm. And being able, I think, to have have a little bit of distance and, and look at these things through, you know, through allegory or through symbology, whether that is tarot or it's astrology or, or feng shui, brings them back to their own power in the situation. It brings them back to, well, this is a pattern that's repeating, you know, instead of focusing on the individual personal issue, it's like, is this a pattern and what can I influence to change this pattern, you know, and make it something more constructive Yeah. and helping us to, I think, link things in our lives as well and kind of give a sense of continuity, which is really, really important because, you know, a lot of people don't have that family and, and when you don't have a strong family background or a strong relationship background or any of those teachings, you tend to attach yourself to maybe someone who's not necessarily healthy for you in a relationship, you know, in the hope they will teach you those things. Mm. Mm -hmm. So I think if you looking at using these tools, I guess, to find patterns and to, to look at things through symbology, I think really, really helps because you can, you can form continuity. You can say, okay, this relationship I'm in now isn't a singular being. It reminds me of, this relationship I had as a child with, you know, my parent, or it reminds me of this situation in my first job where I didn't speak up or I didn't do this or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, and this is a continuation of that. So how do I want to continue this in a, in a more positive or evolved way, you know? So, yeah, I mean, mm. there's a lot of different, I mean, feng shui is perfect for, for influencing the energy around your home you know, and on a spiritual level, it's, you know, we're talking about elements, we're talking about natural objects, but what it comes down to is your relationship with your home, uh, your relationship with your body and your relationship with nature, mm-hmm. you know, so you, you might be utilizing those things through the study of feng shui, but at the end of the day, it comes down to, you yeah. know, your relationship with the natural world. So you're dealing with those things in a, in a more practical way, I suppose. Yeah. Well, and I, you know, I'm curious, you've done, you've traveled extensively, right? Yeah. So, so you've been to over 30 countries <laughs> yeah. and in just identifying the human condition, mm-hmm. well, you know, what have you seen that sort of, it doesn't matter where you are or what yeah. culture <laughs> country you're in? What are some of the things that just, you know, align across cultures and countries well this is what's so fascinating I suppose you know humans are very very similar you know it really doesn't matter where you are at the end of the day we want to feel understood we want to feel valuable not just valued but also valuable we want to know that we we have an influence and and that can range no matter you know no matter where you are people want to feel seen and I think people pursue that endlessly the the goal to feel seen but without taking in you know the the natural flip side of that which is that we have to learn how to see as well 
you know, I've uh, spent quite a lot of time in Peru <laughs> working, you know, working with shamans, working with, you know, with plant medicine and, you know, mm. things like ayahuasca, you know, and I remember going in and I would have at the time only been maybe 22, 23 years old the first time I did that and thinking I was going to have this big moment of enlightenment and they would come to me and they would be like, you know, you are so special and wonderful. And then I would go on and do amazing things in the world. And I mean, it didn't happen that way. It was, it was mm. completely the opposite <laughs> and, <laughs> and brought me back to earth very, very quickly. Um, <laughs> but it was what I actually, the lesson that I took from that very first time is that, you know, I had, I had come by invitation, but I had come to this, you know, native village to use their plant medicine and have some kind of awakening for me. And I thought, my realization was I was trying to to connect with how to be seen or to feel seen or to feel loved or whatever. Mm. And I thought I have just spent a week in this village and I have not seen any of the other people in it because I've been so caught in my own experience. Mm. <laughs> and what I had to come here to learn was to see you know, and the shaman wanted to be seen and the shaman's children wanted to be seen and the rest of the village, they all individually wanted to be seen for their contribution, whether that was growing the crops, whether it was it was cooking them, whether it was making the plant medicine, whether mm. it was, you know, explaining to their children how to make it, whether it was cooking the dinner afterwards. Mm. And holding, holding space for the ceremony, it's like... Exactly, exactly. And so the universal issue, I suppose for everyone, no matter where you are, is wanting to feel seen, but having to learn how to see. And and in that, finding power and finding influence to, to change things for other people and understanding that is then, that creates a situation that we can draw love, we can draw relationships, we can manifest from. Mm-hmm. You know, whatever you're putting into the pool is what's going to be in the pool for you to take out of it. Mm-hmm. And yep. that for me is completely universal, no matter what part of the world or, you know, what level of of income or what job you're in or whether you would consider yourself spiritual or religious or, or none of the above. People just want to feel like they matter, but they don't know how to do that, to be mm. honest. You know, they, they don't know how to matter. And it's like when you see other people, you matter to them. And then from that pool of people being seen and being at one with themselves, you can then manifest whatever it is that you you may need, whether that is a relationship or whether it is a certain job or, or whatever it is that you're after. Mm. You know, so that would be or the just, universal thing, definitely. Yeah, or just self love. You know, completely. Um, uh, well, Kelsey, this has been a really powerful conversation. You know, it's interesting because sometimes we get on. I get on these calls and we've, we haven't met yet in person. Right. So like we haven't, we haven't actually met face to face. Yeah. We actually, this is the first time we've ever even spoken voice to voice. Talk for like another six hours. Totally. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And it's just amazing. It's like, I think, I don't know how you felt when we started the conversation, but I was kind of like, like, okay, like, what are we going to get into today? And we've been yeah. talking a lot about relationships, and a, but we've been talking more about relationships with other people as opposed to the relationship we have with ourselves. Yes. And so I'm just so, so grateful that, you know, spirit beings, human, spirit being human <laughs> <laughs> in this world uh, exists yes. like you, you know, and, and what a, what a really, I mean, fascinating background that you have and just your your origin story your her story is really really awesome it's just like wow so <laughs> so different I you know it's, I was raised in a family where I was taught that uh, even though my mom is highly intuitive and psychic mm-hmm. and tapped in uh, she had this very strong Catholic presence in in her yes. life and so I was raised believing that you know that the, the tarot and you know these other modalities were uh, the devil and to not touch oh them, completely you yeah. know? <laughs> and so I'm, I'm just so glad that I unpacked that whole story and yes I mean I live in Ireland well in oh, Northern yeah. Ireland as which as you know has both these really strong you know Catholic and also Protestant communities and I also I kind of feel like 
I'm okay. I mean, I'm here because people can take this learning or this information from me because I'm not from here. Mm. You know, it Mm. would be too dangerous or too vulnerable for, for people from here sometimes to maybe have to challenge. It's hard enough to challenge your own beliefs, much less when your own family and friends live around you. You know, I can come here and practice anything that I want because I'm not from here. At the end of the day, I have no one to answer to. Yeah. So I'm hoping that by kind of empowering other people in the area, you know, they can kind of spread that. But it would be very hard, I think, to be from here and to challenge those ideas. So mm, um, definitely in Ireland, there's a concept, there's this idea of, you know, are you are you doing the devil's work or something? I'm like, do I look like the devil? Look at me. <laughs> You know, you're the one in the broom closet on Christmas Day. So, (laughs) (laughs) Kelsey, how can people find you online? Okay, so uh, at the Carrero.com, so this is where I offer one on one sessions and they're all tailored to each person. So, whether that is a teaching course, you know, for tarot, for astrology, you know, for feng shui or for symbology, uh, anything like that, you know, people's natal, natal charts, any kind of one-on-one counseling sessions as well. It's also something I offer as far as group sessions or group talks, I tend to pop up all over the place. So I'll be doing more in the U S in 2018. So you kind of just best follow me on the website. Um, also follow me on Facebook, which is Kelsey Carrero or on Instagram, which is Kelsey Carrero as well. And there were dates coming up after Mercury retrograde, uh, <laughs> when I know when I'll be doing um, courses and workshops, one-on-one for couples and also for teenagers, which is kind of a new thing coming in 2018 as well. Oh, so yeah, I think setting young people on a really empowered relationship journey is where I'm starting 2018. Mm. So in some courses and things. So I know yes. a lot of parents have asked me about this. Yes. So it's like, start them off on the right foot. So yes. <laughs> yes, you can find all that at my website. I also have a book as well uh, called Moon Magic, which is about following the lunar cycles, again, for relationships mm. um, and for creatives and intuitives and, you know, our own, our own bodily cycles. So, you know, that's an accessible way as well to kind of start bringing that knowledge into your own life. So that's Great. called Moon Magic and it's on Amazon. Great. Okay. So Moon Magic on Amazon, the Carrero.com. It's the T H E Carrero K O R E R O dot com. We'll have those mm-hmm. links in the show notes. And Kelsey, Perfect. thank you so much for joining us today. No, thank you so much. This has been fantastic. Like I said, we could probably talk for another six more hours. Oh, so. easily, easily. Yeah, everyone would just be like snoring away. We'd be like, and this other thing. <laughs> I love it. Oh, you get, you get me. That's cool. Yes, completely. <laughs> Thank you so much. Well, absolutely. And Ignite, Ignite Intimacy Community, you heard it here. Kelsey Carrero just leading the charge, doing some amazing work <laughs> in the world. Check her out, thecarrero.com and Kelsey Carrero on Instagram and Facebook. And uh, if you have any questions, comments, you know, you'd like to get in touch with Kelsey via us, please drop us an email hello at igniteintimacy.com. And please head over to iTunes, leave us a review and a rating. It helps more people have access and actually find this podcast. And we have a Facebook page as well, Ignite Intimacy. So hop over, give us a like, say hello, let us know you're out there. And Kelsey, thank you again for sharing your brilliance and your light and your insights here with us. Thank you. Thank you so much. This has made my day. I feel fantastic. So thank you. Awesome. Well, that makes our day. And to everyone tuning in, thanks again. Stay blessed and ciao for now. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to another conversation on the Ignite Intimacy podcast hotline. We love that you choose to spend your time with us. Check us out at igniteintimacy.com. Subscribe to us on iTunes and leave us a review and a rating. It helps more people know about us. We love to hear from you. You can email us with questions, comments, or suggestions to hello at igniteintimacy.com. And tell your friends. Music was arranged by Jason Pfaff and Mike Corey. And this podcast is produced by yours truly, Laura Aisha. Thanks again, and we'll see you on the next one. In the meantime, let your light shine bright and ignite your intimacy.